Well, Ty, thank you so much for being here with me on the Entrepreneurial Success Podcast. I'm so excited to share with everyone the topic that you've got available here for us today. However, before we dive into all the good stuff, why don't I hand over to you so you can introduce yourself to the audience and tell us what you do. Well, Harriet, thank you so much for this opportunity to connect with you and to connect with your audience. Um, I am Ty Goodwin. Um, I am the CEO of that marketing team, and I'm also known as the Quiz Queen, hence the topic that we're going to be talking about today. And, you know, I've been online in this online marketing space for about 20 years. I feel like a dinosaur, you know, when it comes to this stuff. And um, the reason I started my business, that marketing team as an agency, was because I work with a lot of amazing, amazing women who were brilliant at what they do. But when it comes to marketing, it is not the funnest thing for them. You know, they'd rather do anything else. It's almost like you ever heard somebody say, I'd rather go to the dentist. Like that's how they feel about when it comes to marketing. <laughs> And so we decided to do two things. Either we'll do it for you or we will teach you how to do it. Because here's what I've found out. Even if somebody tells you what to do when it comes to marketing, like do social media or do organic outreach, nobody's really teaching you how it works. So if you don't understand how it works, you can't fix it. And so we decided to solve that problem of really teaching people how marketing works, how to create online funnels. And our specialty is online quizzes. I know. And this is the exciting part that we're going to talk about in a second. Tell me a little bit about your story, your journey. How did you get started in this? And, and what made you decide to, I mean, obviously you kind of mentioned a little bit, but what made you decide to grow this into an evolving business? You know what? Um, the honest, the, the real core of why I started what I'm doing now is because my daughter was born. I, I, was, I didn't want to go back to work when she was born. I wanted to be there for her. Now, it didn't work out that way 100%. And I had to launch my business while working, which I'm sure a lot of your audience can connect with of having a full-time job and a business on the side. And so I did that for a number of years. Um, this is actually my second iteration at being in full-time business. The first time it did not work out. And it was because because I didn't know how to market. And I say this all the time. I was Facebook rich and profit poor for five years in my business. <laughs> Everybody loved me on Facebook. Oh, they would share my posts. Oh, you write some of the most inspirational stuff, but I was not getting clients. Mm -hmm. And it was because I was doing stuff, but I didn't understand marketing strategy. I didn't understand how to convert people who followed me. And I didn't really understand that even though I had people that were an audience, it wasn't the right audience. It wasn't yes. people who were willing and able to invest. Um, and so once I figured that out um, and I started doing that in my own, um, my second time I launched my business um, within like the first 30 days, I had my first clients back up and running. Um, and the secret to that was using a quiz. Um, and, and once I figured out how to use quizzes in marketing, it just changed everything. So um, the, the short, shorter version of that story with the quiz is that um, I used a quiz to grow my email list from 1,700 subscribers to over 12,000 subscribers. And I did it in just four months. That is and incredible. In Yes, I was able to triple my income, fill my coaching practice. And I said, you know, I'm on to something with this. And so I started doing it for other people as well. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, that is fascinating to hear. And you know what, what I love about your story is about how you went through trial and error, because I think everybody, when they hear about successful business owners, they're like, oh, my gosh, it's like they just born to do it. But there's so much trial and error going on in the beginning. And let's face it, we're still learning. You're yeah. still on a journey. You still are learning so much every single day. So it's never easy, but the determination and the lessons that you took from it is what made you a success at the end of the day. And you're still on that journey. You're still growing and, and, and becoming even more successful. Um, and I think this is what, what resonates with so many people when they listen to this. It's about there are trial and errors, but it's not that it's a bad thing. Actually, when you harness that right, you know that it takes you on a different path and moving forward. Absolutely. I think you know, I wrote a book a long time ago about the difference between bright and brilliant and bright women. You know, we get a failure and we label ourselves. We'll say, oh, man, I never do this or it never works out for me. But when brilliant women have a failure, um, we look at it as um, a stepping stone to figure out what's next. We say, okay, what can I learn from this? And you're right. And especially when it comes to marketing, marketing is always changing and evolving. You know, what? especially we work with a lot of Facebook ads. You know, what worked with a Facebook ad two weeks ago may not be what works tomorrow. And so when you are beholden to something, 
um, and you because you really don't know how the big system works and you just keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to really, really be frustrated, especially when it comes to marketing, because the landscape is always changing. There's a different tool. There's a different tactic. There's a different way to do the content. And so you've always got to be in that space of being open and willing to learn. I know. And, and this is why I'm so excited. So let's dive into the topic. Let's keep everybody yeah. just together now and say, OK, this is what we're going to talk about. You wanted to share with us three tactics to grow your business and your audience, so to speak, on autopilot. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about each one of these, but let's go through them one at a time so everybody can kind of see systematically how they work together. And you already gave a hint as to what the first one is when you spoke earlier. So share with us what quizzes are and how they work. Okay, this is one of my favorite stories to, to talk about. So um, I'm imagining that a lot of your audience has probably taken or actually knows like, you know, Harry Potter, right? And um, and there's been a whole bunch of quizzes about Harry Potter, like which Harry Potter house are you in? And now even before I had even read any of the books or even seen any of the movies, I took a quiz that told me I was Ravenclaw. And I had absolutely no idea what that meant, but I wanted to take the quiz because everybody was taking the quiz. So people are familiar with those kind of Buzzfeed fun types of quizzes. How they start to translate into marketing is it's so cool because your traditional lead magnet and a lead magnet is that thing you give people when they give you their email address, right? Your freebie, your opt-in offer, lead magnet, all the same thing. Um, traditionally, if I give you my email address, you're going to give me some amazing content. Now yes. I've got all of your amazing content and all you've got is my email address. The beautiful thing about a quiz is that I'm going to get so much more information because I know I have more than just your email address. I've got some demographics about you. I've got some things about your behaviors and your pain points and quizzes allow us to do a much better job with our marketing. So for example, one of our clients has an e-commerce business. They sell things for hair. So the quiz we helped her create was what's the number one thing keeping you from growing your hair? So now instead of just an email address, she's got people that are identifying that their hair is dehydrated or that, you know, they're not using the right products. So now in her emails, we can be really specific. And my favorite quiz story is probably one of another e-commerce client who had eyelashes. Now, I love a good fake eyelash. I don't have any on today, <laughs> right? <laughs> but they're just like, they're so cool to like just stick on, right? But I had a client during the pandemic, her business started in 2020 and we were doing a quiz to help people figure out what type of lash is right for you. Well, we did the quiz and people would take, the, take it, get their answer and they would go buy the lash. Within two weeks, we were bringing in about $23,000 just from like the first five emails because people were getting that feedback about which type of eyelash they would go buy it. But then she was also getting data on a back end. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen this over and over again, how quizzes, and I want to be really clear here, not a survey, a survey. I'm telling you information that I already know about myself right? How many kids do you have? Where do you live? How old are you? I already know that. It's no real value to me. And then we wonder why people don't want to take our surveys. Well, I'm just telling you stuff I already know about myself. But if you give someone a quiz, it's going to give them insight and information they didn't have before. One of our um, clients was a doctor. She's an OBGYN. We have a quiz called, where did my O go? And we both know what oh, we're talking about here, ladies, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It was helping them figure out, you know, like people, women who were going into menopause and all that kind of stuff, you know, or we have another quiz around like um, a, a real estate agent, a real estate broker. And it was all about, you know, how to use other people's money. Like what's the best way to use other people's money to fund your next deal? So there's all these different ways to hook people in with the quiz. And a beautiful thing about it is once you set it up, it will just go like people will find the quiz, they'll take it, they'll share it. And before you know it, you've got this audience and a database of people who are not only interested, but they've given you so much more insight into themselves than just the email address. Oh my gosh. And it's so interesting as you were saying that, because um, talking from my own experience, I ran a quiz once and it was something like, uh, what kind of female entrepreneur or business owner are you? And it was amazing. I had so many great responses from it, but it's so true. It is very, very different from a survey because the information that I got from that quiz really helped me zone on my yeah. marketing and being very specific as to who I market what to, 
just mm-hmm. from that one quiz. So yeah. I agree with you. It is so powerful, but you've got to know how to do it right. Yeah. And I think this is where your expertise come in is to help people find out what is that quiz that they need to put out there? How does it link together? And what is it that you need at the end of the day in order to get that marketing strategy together? It's yeah, so absolutely. powerful. Yeah, it can be. And, you know, and a lot of folks think, well, I'm just going to slap some questions together and, you know, I'll, I'll give this, this tip, you know, we give more, you know, um, to, to folks that we work with, but this one tip of, if you're thinking about a quiz, don't start with your questions first. Like yeah. that's the biggest mistake I see people do it, or they've got like 50 billion questions. Nobody wants to take a long quiz, you know? And so you've got to know the questions to ask you've got to really come up with good outcomes and we've got a process that we've been able to help people with to get that done fast. Yeah. And then also I think quizzes are very powerful, but there's, there's a strategy behind it. As an example, when you ask a question, if somebody says yes, you're going to take them and lead them to another question. Or if they say no, you're going to take them on another path. So, you know, there's all of this, it's like a framework, almost like a spider's web. It's not yeah. just going to be one or two and be all and same all. A quiz is very much formulated based on the previous answer they gave you. And I think this is where people's brains just start like, oh my gosh, but that sounds complicated. Well, it doesn't if they work with you, I guess. <laughs> Right. And we map that out. And there's a couple of different ways. So what you're talking about is one of those logic based quizzes where yes. somebody does, like, for example, um, we've got a, a quiz on quizzes. Right. And so if somebody answers the first two questions where we ask them, so what's your marketing budget and do you have an offer? If they say no to that, they don't get the rest of the questions. They get taken to you're not ready for a quiz yet because mm. we turn people down. Like if you don't know, if you don't have a high ticket offer, um, if you don't have the money to drive traffic to your quiz, which is something that we'll talk about in a little bit. Like you don't need to spend the time and money building it. You need to learn how to go get clients first. Yeah. And that's just with anybody who's like, oh, I need a funnel. I need a funnel. I'm not so sure you do. So. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So that kind of beautifully leads into the second element and that is funnels. And I know as soon as we speak about funnels, people go like, oh, funnels again. Everybody's talking about funnels, but Hey, Mm -hmm. they're there for a reason because they very well work again, Mm -hmm. if you do it right. So tell us about your experience. Yeah. And I want to be really clear. Everybody has a funnel, even if you don't think you do, because a funnel is not just the technology, right? People say, well, I've got a landing page and I've got email marketing. Well, your funnel in its basic terms is simply how you move people from what we say, I'm interested enough to give you my email address to I'm in as in I'm investing and working with you. And so your funnel may not have any like landing pages. Your funnel may be, I gave them a business card. I followed up. I got on their calendar. We had a conversation and they turned into a client. That's a funnel. You have a pattern, right? A repeatable system that you can use to book clients. And that's what a funnel is. Now, when you get into the tech side of an online funnel, yeah, then we are talking about landing pages and email automations. And I've seen people build quizzes, but they stop there. And they don't have anything to follow up. Like when we build quizzes for people, we actually have an entire seven email sequence, seven series, you know, seven email sequence, like follow up system for people. Because what we understand is people don't buy the very first time they see you. Right. And we liken it, um, Henriette, to like getting married. Like most people don't get married on the first date. Hopefully not. (laughs) Now, I will say this. If it's Idris Elba. We might consider it, okay? <laughs> you see Luther, right? <laughs> if it's him, we might consider it. But, you know, for most people, we're not going to do that. And so just like when you want people to buy your offer, you have to woo them. You have to court them. And that's what your email does. And despite the rumors that email marketing is dead, because it's not, um, you know, you really have to make sure that you've got a good nurturing sequence, again, to guide those people from, hey, I'm, I'm going to give you my email address. To now, wow, you've really demonstrated value. I can really see because you talked about the pain points. And now I can understand that I need to hire you. And that's what your email sequence is. And that's part of your funnel. The funnel isn't just your landing page. Yes, you have a landing page that drives people to your quiz. And then from the quiz, they get the results. And then from those results, they're going to have an email sequence that segments them, that nurtures them and follows up. And that's the completeness of a funnel. And then you get to have the upsells and downsells, but I've seen a lot of people, whether it's a quiz or any other kind of lead magnet, it's just it. So you got them on your list and you don't talk to them for months. We don't do that. Oh no, I love it. And you know what? I think part of the funnel is, 
is not just about the nurturing, but it's very much about establishing that relationship. Yes, nurturing is establishing that, but it's about how you do it the right way, the authentic way. And I think that's why people have this kind of discrepancy with email lists and with email marketing. Because number one, they may be not at that point then where they feel how authentic they need to be. Do they need to become somebody else in order to do email marketing? Um, how does it all link together in a funnel? But I think it's very much about, like you say, it's not just a, an online funnel. It is the system, the process of how you are guiding people to you. So even if it's not online, you still have yeah. a funnel. As exactly. soon as people grasp that concept, I think it's just this shift in the mindset about, oh, actually, that's how a business operates. <laughs> exactly. And it goes back to what I was saying earlier about people just don't understand how marketing works. Now, listen, I love social media. Um, when I launched my business, I was a single mom and I was working from home. So I couldn't go out and do a whole bunch of networking. And so I literally use Facebook to build my audience. Like I reached out to um, people I went to college with people who I taught as fifth graders, like I built a big audience on social media. However, I didn't still, I still didn't understand how marketing worked. And that's what a lot of people do. Like social media has us fooled in a lot of ways. Well, all you need to do is put something on TikTok and then you'll get a whole bunch of followers and then you'll make like a million dollars. It doesn't happen for everyone that way. Those are flukes. And I call them that because you can't always repeat the same thing. And it's almost, I said this to someone the other day, it's almost like and I don't know anything about this personally, but it's almost like what I understand the experience to be on like drugs, right? You're chasing that high, right? You had one fluke that worked one time and now you keep trying to recreate that instead of learning how to market, just like with, you know, people that are into like the to drugs, instead of learning how to, um, to heal or learning how to, you know, resolve the issues and trauma, you keep chasing that high over and over and over again, and it's never going to come back. And so Wesley, that same thing with marketing, you have to learn how marketing works so that you're able to modify it or be flexible or just really like evolve with things as they go. Otherwise, you'll be stuck trying to do something that worked two years ago and getting really mad because it's not working today. And then we don't yeah. like that. Exactly. And it's funny that you that you're saying that because I talk about the recipe, you know, your mm. your strategy your marketing strategy is like your recipe. The more you do a recipe, the better you get at it, the better the results at the end of the day. Yes. You know, up to a point where you put the recipe yes. in the drawer, you don't need to look at it because you know exactly what it is that you need to do. And then you can experiment with it a bit as well here and there. And I yes. think this is, this is the thing about marketing strategy and all your funnel, whatever that might be. But this is the thing, you've got to have that in place because this is the thing that allows you to actually, number one, attract more clients, but also number two, grow your business with yeah. ease and a little bit of freedom sometimes as well. Let's face it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I think for a lot of the women that I work with, it's also making that decision about like, are you trying to be a freelancer? Or are you really trying to build a business? Yeah. And if you're being that freelancer where you're waiting on referrals and you go, you get one or two projects and you're happy with that. And okay, you know, I'll just settle for that. That's fine. And this is settling for that or choosing that I should say is a better word is okay. But I hear so many people talking about, I want to create a six figure business. I want to do that. Well, that's got different requirements. You're going to have to learn how to market. Even if you hire people to sell for you, they're going to take their cues from you. And if you don't know how to sell, if you don't understand how it works, there's no way you're going to be able to direct them in getting it done right for your business and for your brand. Very, very well said. And I love that because it's like um, the other day I spoke to somebody. She's like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to get a social media manager. And I was like, great. Do you have a strategy that you're going to pass on to her? And she was like, no, I just thought I'd ha let her handle it all. I was like, well, basically you're paying somebody to do testing for you to see what works and what doesn't work. And you're not going to get the results for a long time. It's yeah. like anything, yeah. whenever you do a marketing strategy, you need to kind of know what that strategy looks like before you can mm -hmm. hand it over to somebody to manage it for you, basically. Absolutely. We see that all the time. I had a client who is, um, she's amazing. She teaches people how to pitch and get on Shark Tank, you know, and they, they close deals. And I think they call it the lion's den or something like that in like 
in, in um a dragon's den that's it dragon's den. Thank yes. you. Okay, yeah, dragon's den, right? so start taking your dragons in there but she teaches people how to do these pitches and she hired somebody to do her social media and they were putting out all these inspirational quotes and i'm just like you're not selling motivation like you're not selling like journals you're teaching people how to pitch for millions of dollars but because the strategy was misaligned mm -hmm. and you know it, it was like i said you could be facebook rich and profit poor right you can be twitter rich TikTok rich um instagram rich because I, and i see this on instagram all the time posting all these amazing beautiful inspirational quotes we love canva right but there's so much more you can do with it but you're not, cause you're not really talking to your ideal audience. Like you're not speaking to their pain points. You're motivating people and it looks pretty, but you're not really um, connecting to the people who are willing and able to pay you because you're not talking about what they need. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's, this is also, you know, just quickly touch up, touching up on social media. This is where that misconception is. Like you said earlier, people think if they just show up on social media, they're going to instantaneously sign up clients. And that's not it. And I always refer to the fact that social media is great. And if you do get a client or two from it, awesome. But it is a visibility strategy. There needs to be other elements in the funnel leading yeah. those people to you. And I think that's where the, the missing links sometimes are. But now moving from the funnel, the third step in order to get this clients or get these audience on automation is kind of something that people are shying away from sometimes because I know why. And I'm just going to say it outright because they're scared. They don't understand it. Yeah. Talk to us about Facebook ads. Yeah. So I'm going to start with Facebook ads, but I want to say this for any paid traffic, um, because this is another missing link. The biggest, one of the biggest things, the biggest link that people miss, it's a distribution problem. Mm -hmm. You're not getting in front of enough people. People don't understand their numbers. We do a five day challenge. And in that five day challenge, one of the things we talk about is you've got to know your numbers and people don't really understand how marketing numbers work. So for example, um, if you do a webinar, or I, I'm not even going to go into the webinar piece just yet. But let's talk about um, just regular like conversion rates. Your typical conversion rate is 3%, right? Which means that at any given time, three out of 100 people are ready to buy from you. That's it. Ready to buy right now. No nurturing needed. They're just ready to buy. If you're not even talking to 100 people, how are you going to get those three? Mm -hmm. You can't get there. Yeah. I've seen people say, well, I want to make 10 sales this month. Okay. How many people did you talk to? Four. How in the world do you get 10 sales from four conversations? The math doesn't work that way. Right. But if you're not paying attention to understanding the numbers, it's going to be hard. Like, what's your close rate? Do you close everybody that you talk to? No. Well, out of 10 people, you closed two. So if you want 10 people, that means you have to talk to how many more people? Right. You got to have 50 people on the books, you know, and they don't get those numbers. And so what I realized and how I fell in love with Facebook ads was because it started giving me those numbers. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. It was a difference between me having 10 people and, oh my gosh, if I close 20%, that's two sales, but I got to get those 10 people as opposed to having hundreds of people. And now it makes it easy for me to get those 10 sales or 10 calls and get those people. The first time I use Facebook as I'll be very honest, I shut it off. <laughs> I got that little notification from Facebook that said, and here's what it read in my mind. It didn't say this, but in my mind, it said, we took $500 of your money. And I know it didn't say that, right? It's just like your bill for this quarter is, or this, this period is $500. But in my mind, it was like, we just took $500 out of your account. And I was like, oh no. And I shut the ad down. And my coach was like, yeah, you've done that too. <laughs> my coach was like, well, why did you do that? I'm like, well, he took $500 out of my account. He's like, but how much money did you make? Okay. So in two weeks, I had spent $500 because I was trying to figure things out. Um, I booked 10 sales calls in two weeks. I closed two of them for a total of $8,500. So mm -hmm. one 5,000 package and one $3,500 package. So basically I spent $500 to make $8,500. Oh, now I understand. Now I started to see this is why people invest in paid traffic. Because I was getting in front of more people, more eyeballs, that's the other way I say it, more eyeballs means more leads, means more sales conversations, means more sales. 
And a lot of times people don't get that and they think that I'm just going to put this out on Facebook. The same 50 people on Facebook that see your stuff all the time that didn't buy in the last three years, they're not going to magically wake up and say, oh, I want to buy now because in most cases, they're not the right people. Yes. And so you need that new audience. And if you don't know how to build your audience, you don't know how to get in front of enough people, you're never going to have a business. And here's the other thing I say about this. Everybody knows McDonald's, right? McDonald's is known all over the world. McDonald's still does advertisements. We cannot get away from TV. They're still advertising. They advertise on the radio. They advertise all over the place. If McDonald's is paying for advertising, how do I, little Miss Ty Good, a little brown girl from Philadelphia, right, think that I'm not going to need to pay for advertising? It just, it just doesn't make sense. In the marketing space, you need to be, you need to a way to get in front of new people. And then you also need a way to keep in front of them. And there's going to be some type of paid traffic that you're going to want to have at some point. And I will say this, it's not always the thing to do right now for some people. Like if you're still trying to figure out your offer, you're still trying to figure out your audience, you don't want to jump into that and think it's going to be a magic bullet. Yeah. Right. There's stages to this. However, for a lot of my folks that, you know, they were relying on referrals and word of mouth, um, the referrals have gone down. They've built a really good book of business and they just need more visibility, but they're afraid to try Facebook ads. I guarantee you, if you've got those pieces in place, it's the best thing you can do because you need to get more eyeballs on who you are. Yes. And I think it's so true. I, I made that very mistake in the beginning when I started my business. I was like, oh my gosh, Facebook ads, I've got to try it out. Spend a ton of money on Facebook ads. And I was like, same as you. I was like, oh, stop, too much money. Stop, 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 close it all down. But then I went to look back and I was like, oh, actually, I got a really good return on this. And so that's why I was laughing when you were saying that, because I did exactly the same thing. And Facebook ads are amazing, but it all comes down to you need to be open minded to the fact that, number one, you need to have a funnel in place, which is the key thing. And I think so many people just do Facebook ads just to get people, but they don't know where to take those people. Yeah. The second thing is, is you need to understand who those people are that you want to target with mm -hmm. the Facebook ads. And that is a hiccup for so many people. They really struggle to identify who that ideal client is in order to put their ads in front of them. And Absolutely. I'm sure you've seen that as well with all the clients you've worked with. I do. I mean, that's one of the things that we do. We, um, when we take people on, we ask them to do what we call a brand profile. And it's amazing how people, even people who are making six figures in their business, they still don't know who their ideal client. And it goes back to what I was saying before, they've had these flukes but they can't repeat it, right? Yes. And so what we say is, unless you had, you, you want a repeatable system so you can create predictable income, right? Like if I know every time I do a challenge that I'm going to get 300 people from my ads, guess what? I'm going to do those ads every single time because I know it's going to bring this amount of people in. And I know if I have this number of people in, I can make this amount of sales. So it's all tied together, but you're right. You need to have the funnel in place, which is kind of why we set it up this way, right? You need to have a funnel right, which we talked about to make your ads work. And then how do you get people into that funnel? You've got to have a really, really good lead magnet, which in our case, quizzes have been great lead magnets to get people into the funnel. So now when we run those ads, we're actually getting the right people into this space and we're building a list of people that are hungry for what we have to offer. Exactly. And you know what, you said it so beautifully, you put it so beautifully together. And I think this is where that missing link is for so many people when it comes to Facebook ad, not just the fact that you've got to understand how they work, number one, but also the thereafter. Once you have the Facebook ad, what is it that you do in order to get people to go on that journey with you? And this is where I think the quizzes that you're offering is amazing. And you know what? I've seen quizzes along uh, uh, around for quite a while, but it seems still like it's this unknown secret it's there but people don't really know how to utilize it yet so which is why i'm so excited for you to share about it because i think it is really one of those unutilized elements mm -hmm. that could really propel people forward and you've seen it as well i mean with the work that you're doing with your clients well well quizzes are the new webinar you know and i'm gonna Basically. date myself a little bit with this you know i did my first webinar guess when i did my first webinar henriette oh gosh 
Well, you said you started in the day 2000, so uh, 2011, 10? No, I did my first webinar in 1999. No way. <laughs> yeah. And I remember that because we were, I was, I was working for a company that had sales offices all over the country and we couldn't bring our sales managers off the floor. So we did webinars. We taught people through webinars. And I remember because we were all worried about Y2K, we were like, oh my gosh, she's going to destroy the computers and da, 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 da. And I was, we were trying to figure out how we we're going to be able to do these webinars with Y2K on the horizon. Um, so I've been doing webinars since 1999. There are people that are still today, what is it, 22? 23 years later just trying to figure out how to write webinars mm. that's a long time and so I, see, I see quizzes as that same thing like i think quizzes have been around for a little bit you've had people that have dabbled with them um i think a lot of us are still trying to figure out how to optimize and monetize it but i will tell you this um it's it, it's there for people to figure out um, what I have seen people do is they'll create a quiz, but they'll just be like any other lead magnet. They don't have a funnel or a system around it. I would say, well, it didn't work. No, it, it did work, but you didn't have a system around it to actually yes. get the conversions. And you have to do that, whether it's a quiz or any other kind of lead magnet. And so you're right. They've been around. A lot of us are figuring out how to optimize them and make them work. We've got a really good system. It's called Quizzing Grow Rich is our system, right, that we teach people to how to build performance-based or behavior-based quizzes, right, that they can actually use that data to make better decisions. And we say, we want to give, you want to have a quiz or any kind of lead magnet that's going to allow you to get the right content and the right offers to the right people at the right time. And that's how you make money. That is so true. Oh my gosh. I just, I just love how you put it together. So I know that the audience is listening to this and everybody's going, Oh my gosh, quizzes. I need to look into it. This is amazing funnels. Oh my gosh. I need to see how it all works together. And now you've triggered a lot of people as well going Facebook ads. I've got to try those again, but here's the thing, you know, with all of these elements, you've got to have a strategy to it. You've got to know how to put it together. What is it that you want to achieve and then work backwards from there? Just like you said, it is so important. Not start with the questions on the quiz, please, please, please. Um, so you also, in order to make it a little bit easier, you've got a free quiz for everybody here listening to this. What is that free quiz all about and how can it help them? So I've got a free quiz on quizzes, <laughs> right? It's actually, you know, what type of quiz um, will actually get you more sales conversations, right? And, and, and it's really cool because you're going to take the quiz, you're going to answer the questions, and then not only is it going to tell you the best type of quiz for you, it's actually going to give you a report that will break down and give you examples. This is what that kind of quiz looks like, and here's how the funnel works. Because my job is to educate and make it easy for you to see, now I know how this could apply to my business. So um, I can give the link to that, but they can take the quiz, they'll get some information and insight on which quiz will work best for their business and then they'll get that report as well oh my gosh and thank you so much for making your quiz available so for those of you listening or watching this video if you're very intrigued and curious about using quizzes yourself from my own experience as well i can say it works amazing and actually just having this conversation i'm itching i want to go back there and do it again but for those of you who feel that this is something you really want to dive into my suggestion is go down to my show notes go click on the link there where you can take the quiz on the quizzes in order to find out what quiz is suitable or can work for your business and i would highly suggest then that you get in contact with ty you can have a conversation with her and see how she could possibly help you I know this works and with her experience and her knowledge, especially in the marketing field as well, she can really do amazing things with your business just by implementing quizzes, uh, funnels, and then obviously doing Facebook ads. Just those three elements on its own could really help you in particular. Oh, Ty, I just honestly, I'm getting so excited just having this conversation, but I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for being here and just sharing this. And um, I'm excited. And if I get excited, I hope everybody else is excited about quizzes and just knowing how to put the funnels together in order to make it work, but equally using Facebook ads the right way. Are there any last tips that you want to share with the audience? I want to say thank you so much, Henry. It's been so much fun having this conversation with you. And I could talk marketing all day. Um, but the, the thing that I will say for folks is that, listen, um, at the end of the day, it's our responsibility to make ourselves visible to our audience. 
I always say that there are people who can't step into their purpose until we step into ours. And part of that means that we've got to show up as the brilliant entrepreneurs that we are so all those people can find us. So knowing that and believing that, you need to get your marketing together so those people who need you can absolutely find you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, definitely, definitely 100%. And talking about that, obviously you can also connect with uh, Ty via Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. Those details will be also in my show notes, but my suggestion is just go and take the free quiz. You might just be very surprised at the outcome. Go and have some fun with it. Ty, thank you so much again. I hope you have a lovely day all the way there on the East Coast, and I will be in touch with you very soon. Thank you. <laughs>